Hi, it's Janelle McClarty and welcome back to the Shopify for Beginners course. And in this section, I'm going to show you how to add a product to your Shopify site. So you're just going to have to log back into your website on the back end. And if you don't know how to do this, you can watch a previous video that we put up that shows you how to log into your shop, Shopify account. You're going to click on the products tab and you're going to see all your product information listed here, like your inventory transfers, your collections and gift cards, but we're going to focus on adding your first product. So you're going to hit the add product button. And then we're going to go through all of the important areas and explain how to add your first product. So right here, we're gonna put the title of the product, which for now it's gonna be just a t-shirt. You're gonna add the product description for the t-shirt. Make sure you add a description that's pretty um, it's specific for the product that you're going to be adding. You're going to add the media, so the image of whatever product you're adding. After that, you're going to add the price. So this t-shirt will add $20. This compare at price section is for if you want to reduce, show a reduced price and compare it to the product's original price. So let's say we want to show a sale item and the shirt is now $20. And let's put the reduced price to 10, sorry, the compare at price to 30. So it's going to show on the front end that the price was 30 and now it's 20. So the customer or whatever user can feel like they have a sale. This area cost per item is something that you will see, but the customers won't see. So you're going to put input how much does this item cost for you to receive so that you know what your profit margin and your regular margin is. So I'm selling it for 20, but let's say I it takes me $11 to make this shirt. So my profit's going to be $9 and the margin is 45%. You're going to check or uncheck this box if you're going to be charging tax on this product. You're going to put in your inventory information if you are keeping track of inventory for this product. Um, some of you guys are going to be selling digital products, so there's no inventory required. Some of you guys are going to be offering services, so there's no inventory required. Um, even if you sell a physical product and you're doing drop shipping, there's no inventory required. But if you do have inventory on hand, you definitely should input the areas, um, the information in this area. So let's say the most important information when you're just starting out, you may not have SKUs yet or barcodes. If you do, you input them here, but you should track your quantity. So let's say um, for this particular shirt, I have 10 in stock or I'll put, I'll put 15 in stock. And let's say when you run out of the 15, you want to still continue selling them while you um, obtain more stock, you would check this box. If you want to stop selling and mark it as sold out on your site, you would leave that box unchecked. You want to ensure that if you are selling a product, as I said, you check this box that it is a physical product. If you're in the digital product realm or you're providing services, then you'll leave that box unchecked. You're going to put the shipping weight. And this is one kilogram for this shirt. We're going to put the country or region from where this product is being shipped from. 
So in this case, we are located in Canada. And then the province, we're going to put Ontario. And your HS code, you can input that either here or if you don't have one, then you just leave that area blank. For, so for some new businesses, you may not have this. But um, as you develop your business and register a tax account, you'd put that information in there. Variance. So this is very important for anyone setting up a store that may have different variants or multiple options like sizes or colors for their products. So for example, a shirt, you're going to have variants in size and probably in color. So for this particular shirt, we're offering it in black and white. So that's two variant colors. I'm going to set that up so you can see how that works. So we're going to put color and then the color options are black and white. And to make it populate like that, you just type it in, type in the color name and hit comma and it would show the two colors. And let's say another variant will be the size. So I want to offer this shirt in small, medium and large. So size is already there and then I put small. Well, what some people do is just put S, M, and L, and then XL, double XL. So we're going to use those simplified color codes. So S, or just abbreviations for the color. So that's small, that's medium, and L for large. And maybe we'll put XL and double XL. And that's all the variants we're going to be using. Um, let's say if your product does not have any variants, you'll just uncheck this area. Then we got to put the prices and the quantity and if you have SKU numbers for each variant. So let's say the smalls would be a lesser price than the extra larges or let's say we want to put the quantities we only have, we don't have 15 smalls, let's say we only have five of each item. So we're going to input five and so that when we do run out of a size we can Shopify will let you know and you can restock and let's say we're sold out of XL and double XL we'll leave those as zero but at least the customer knows that we do provide that and they'll look out for um, when it is back in stock so just to go over briefly we've inputted a title of the product the description, an image, the price, the price it was before, so the compared to price. Should choose price. Yep. And then the cost it takes us to produce this item, we put that here. We put that we charge tax on this product. We want to track the quantity that we have available. I'm going to increase that. We put that this is a physical product because it is a t-shirt. We put the weight. Um, if you do not know the weight for your product, I recommend a lot of Shopify owners to just buy a scale. You can get one on Amazon. Um, you put the country of origin of where your product is manufactured and the province. And then you put in the variants if you have any. And then this is where you put in the additional variant information and then there's another column that I skipped over here that we're gonna do right now and it is this little mini column to the right so what is the product type we're gonna put that this is a shirt Boom. Um, who is a vendor? So you don't have to use this area. Um, I recommend using it if you do have multiple vendors that you're working with and you want to track, okay, which which vendor supplies what product. So on the back end, you're more organized. Or if you want people to know on the front end where you got, where each specific item comes from. So it might be beneficial for the customers that you have to know 
okay, this is from this particular vendor versus that, and you want to you want them to know that so that they can continue shopping for vendors that they want or new vendors they want to try. So this area is very. It only matters if you have vendors that you're working with and they have a high volume of products on your site. So we're going to skip that because there's only one product. Collections is very important. So we're going to put this in the home page collection. And let's say you had multiple collections, like um, you want to organize your products by men's collection versus women's and kids, or you can put spring collection versus summer, winter, fall, um, sale collection, and then you have the home page collection. So we're going to set up collections on the Shopify intermediate course because there's so many different ways to do this. But for now, we're going to put this in the home page collection and then tags. So we're going to tag this as just, again, a regular t-shirt. And once this little column is finished, we are complete. Right now it's a draft. I'm going to hit save and then it's going to be published. And let's see how this product looks. To preview it in the store. And this is how it looks. So you see here that you can see the sale price. The customer knows that, okay, I got a sale. It was 30, but now it's 20. It's a t-shirt. Um, here are the color options that we have. Here are all the sizes that we have. And remember, we ran out of XXL, so it says sold out, right? But we have all of these in stock. They're able to buy it. We have the description right here, which as I said, I recommend putting something lengthy and specific. <laughs> and then they can just add it to their cart and purchase the product. So this video is now to a completion. I hope you um, learned how to add a product to your Shopify and we're gonna move on to the next video, which is gonna show you the final stages and important areas to look for when setting up the last parts of your Shopify site. All right, thank you.